Hello and welcome back to the Our League Championship Wrap. I'm Jenna Brough. Here alongside me I've got Andrew Henderson. First up, Hender, would you like to go over your weekend? Uh, yeah, it was a good weekend. Uh, well, obviously, barring Friday night, we, we didn't, uh, didn't get the the chocolates on, on Friday night against a very good St. Helens team. And we oh, did. Yeah, I know you did. And well done. Much needed. Much needed very for much Wakefield. Needed. Much needed win for Wakefield. Uh, but in terms of our, our game, I thought it was a fantastic spectacle. You know, I thought what a great game of rugby league. Two quality teams going at it. Um, I thought we were in control for large parts of that game. But, you know, Saints, Saints really showed their quality at the back end, didn't they? I just felt they just... They maintained their level of intensity and, and managed to find a way to uh, to come home against us. Yeah, like you said, looking forward to doing battle with them again in the future. Thanks for that, Hender. Now let's take a look at the round 19 results. First up, we've got our feature game, York v Dewsbury. Let's have a look at the highlights here. Daniel Igbignan drives it forward, gets within five of the York line. Robbie Ward at dummy half, jumps out, goes out the back to Finn. Finn shows, goes, as he threw, yes he is, he's over. And that's the opening try for Dewsbury Rams. Michael Knowles, last tackle at dummy half. Wide ball now to Sykes. Sykes, left foot little dink into the corner. Warranty's up, Whiteley's up, Whiteley's not in the back. And Warranty pounces, and that's a try for Dewsbury. Mistake made by Whiteley. He tried to tap it back inside, but Warranty pounces. Wide ball now to Sykes, cuts back off his left. Oh, great pass, and that's a try there. Fantastic try for Owen Trout. Great play from Sykes. York City Knights now. They're 14-0 down at this moment in time. Finn getting treatment on the short side, but hey, out of dummy half, and it's Brinning. Oh, great try there from Chris Brinning. Brinning at dummy half. Wide ball now. Out the back. Robinson promotes it on there. Nice ball and through, and that's a great play from the York City Knights. And that's Cameron Scott on dual reach from your Hull FC. Sykes, long kick downfield. Will Aves collects. Looks like he's returning with purpose. Oh, and he's run around his man. Oh, great work from Will Oaks. Is he going to score? Inside ball. Oh, fantastic try for Liam Harris. Back it up on the inside. And what a line break from Will Oaks. He stands up his opposite number, Gabriel. Gabriel now finds. Oof, God, thought he looked a little bit high there. Play continues. Sykes now down the short side. Wide pass out to Rob Warrensey. Into the corner. He's over. What a diamond finish from Rob Warrensey. He punches the air. Dewsbury now on the attack. Going forward is Tom Garrett. Knowles at dummy half. Looks, looks right. He comes left to Fintz, which is it back to Sykes. Sykes lines up for the one point, and he will. He nails it to Sykes. Oh, fantastic play from Paul Sykes. Ball comes wide now to Harris. Harris, little grubber through. Marsh collects. Marsh is going to score. Oh, what a finish. They did this earlier in the season with a late try to win it, and I think this will be the same. And there's the full-time siren, and York snatched victory 24 points to 21. York 24, Dewsbury 21. What a game, Hender. It was. What a game indeed, Jenna. I mean, York coming back from 14-0 down. Uh, you could argue there was some controversy within the game. Uh, uh, York, I think, had Tim Spears and, and Sam Scott on different occasions in the Simbin, so we're down to, to 12 men for 20 minutes. And then a dubious send-off for a high tackle as well. So then I played the, rem the remaining 30 minutes of the game with 12 men. So, uh, you know, so you could argue there, 50 minutes of the game, they were playing with 12 men. Uh, you know, I thought Dewsbury had some really good performers in, in the likes of Rob Warrens. I thought he was outstanding. Paul Sykes controlled things really, really well for Dewsbury. And I think they thought they had the game won uh, when Paul Sykes landed the, the field goal to take it to 21 points to 20. But uh, a late Matty Marsh try in the last sort of couple of minutes of the game sealed the victory for the York City Knights. So fantastic re result for them. You know, facing the adversity that they had to face and the challenges that they had to face, I think will take a lot of confidence for that. And again, just shows the character of that team. They never know when they're beat, uh, and that's a fantastic result for York. Next up, we've got Halifax 18, Featherstone 24. Fifth straight league defeat now for Halifax here. Where are we going to go with this one? Yeah, uh, it's disappointing for Halifax, isn't it? it? Is, you know, yeah. it really is. Uh, I think that pretty much has decimated any playoff hopes for them uh, moving forward. So I think the remainder of their season now is just about 
you know, trying to stay mid-table and, and be competitive and, and try and build into, into next season, really. Uh, however, you know, fantastic response from Featherston to bounce back after the disappointment of, of losing at home to, to Barra last week. A you know, late try for Josh Hardcastle to, to seal the victory, but I, I felt that throughout the game they, they were pretty much uh, in control uh, from start to finish. Uh, but for Halifax, disappointment again. Next up, we've got Rochdale 28, Swinton 36. 17th league defeat here now for Rochdale. Yeah, you know, again, we, we spoke about it last week, didn't we, that uh, this was probably a game that Rochdale would target as winnable, uh, certainly at the start of the season, and, and probably now that if they were going to try and salvage something out of this season, then they, they want to go there and get a result. And, and look, <laughs> they performed well. Uh, you know, they really gave a really good account of themselves, so plenty of good, encouraging signs from the Rochdale Hornets. However, they just didn't have enough quality on the day. You know, I think it was 14-10 at halftime to Swinton, and, and I think at one point Rochdale got in front, and Swinton did have to come back, but they just had enough quality at, at the end of the day. So I'm sure Stuart Little and his men will be pleased with that one. Yeah. Next up, we've got Sheffield 18, Lee 22. Huge win here now for playoff rivals, Lee. Yeah, well, we, we dubbed it. This was probably the game of the round, wasn't it? You know, Sheffield sitting in sixth going into the game. Lee was sitting third. Uh, and like you said, you know, this was probably a game that Sheffield really needed to win, you yeah. know, because um, they needed to keep in touch and distance of that, that top five. Uh, and obviously, it's like anything. If you want to get there, you've got to beat the teams above you. And uh, like I said, great game of football, really close. Uh, I thought Liam's, Liam Forsyth was really impressive for Lee. Scored a brace and, and had a lot of involvement coming out of backfield for him. Caused some problems to the, the, the Sheffield defence. Uh, disappointment for Sheffield because, again, you know they're still going to have to keep fighting hard at the back end of the season. But there's still plenty of games to go for them to, to creep into that top five. But it would have helped them if they'd have got the result. But well done to Lee. They really consolidate themselves in third position now. So they're certainly a team on the up. Next up, we've got Batley 10, Toronto 40. Let's get your views in a minute, Hendo. We're just going to go over to John Wilkin here. Yeah, I'm not sure really. I thought I thought we were really poor today. And it's all due respect to, to Batley. I know the, the scoreline made it possibly look like we, we were much the better side, but I just don't think that was the case. I thought they competed really hard and barring a few sort of lucky tries, it should have been a much closer game because uh, we worked great today. We didn't control the ball. We didn't, we didn't really get in charge of our last players. So. It invited Batley onto us and I think we defended for sort of 20 minutes in that first half and that's hard whoever you play against. So I think credit to Batley, they, they came with some tactics that worked for him and for us we need to be much better than that. I thought we made too many errors with the ball, especially coming out of our half and then um, the way you finish your set is really important. I didn't think we kicked the ball particularly well today, so it's just things you need to keep working on. You know, last week our attack was a bit scratchy and then this week we made a few errors, so you know, I suppose there'll be a big amount of attention put on our attack in training but you can overthink these things uh, we just need to work it out on the field and I'm sure we will a fast start here uh, for Toronto an 18 nil lead did you ever see Batley coming back from that really uh, probably not Jenna to be honest like you said they got out the blocks didn't they they started fast got off to an 18 nil lead uh, and like you said that was before Batley could get off the mark you know I thought Andy Ackers was a real standout for, for Toronto on the day he really scored a brace of tries but Ricky Latelli as well I think continues to, to grow as, as the season goes on you know very very impressive um, certainly showing that he is probably the, the best centre in the competition and some are even talking that possibly the, the championship player of the season well, we'll soon find out by the back end of the year but he's certainly been in impressive form Next up, we've got Barra 6, Toulouse 36. Barra unable to like come back with another win after last week's win. Yeah, no, look, obviously, fantastic result for them. And, they, and you know what, they've had some really good performances of, recent, of, of late in recent weeks. But, yeah, they just couldn't get that form back at home, could they? I thought, you know, Toulouse welcomed Jonathan Ford back, uh, which was I think was, was important for them. Sometimes... Uh, Certain players just have that influence, you know. Even though Ford probably wasn't at his mercurial best on the weekend, just the presence of him in the team just adds confidence to those around him. Yeah, they were twenty-four six up at half time. I didn't really see a way back for Barrow, and at the end of the day, it was a pretty clinical and dominant performance from the Toulouse side, which was much needed for them because you know they've they've probably fallen off the horse a little bit in recent weeks, not been at their best. Um, but like I said, a fantastic result for them away from home in Barrow. Last up here, round nineteen result. We've got Bradford sixty-two, witness nil. This is a big defeat this. I didn't see this one coming. Wowzers. I did not see this coming yeah. either. I mean, I, I, I predicted, I think we both predicted a Bradford win. Yeah, I thought did. Bradford at home, I thought oh, off the back of the performance and the result against Halifax the week before, I just felt that would just 
galvanise them and give them that little bit of drive, that inner in a hunger to go, do you know what? We're still a chance of making the top five. I just felt that 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 result last week was so pivotal to you know this back end of the season for them. And wow, haven't they turned it on in style? John Keir saying that that has been the best 80 minute performance he's seen from a Bradford team since he's been in charge. Uh, I thought Joe Keys was only back in the team last week after having six months out. Was very impressive last week. Was outstanding uh, yesterday in that in that game. But witness, you've got to ask the question. Um, you know what's what's what gone happened? wrong there? I mean that's. That, for me, is an unacceptable performance yeah. from, from the Witness Vikings. They're a full-time side. I mean, I'll be looking for a massive response uh, next week, the Vikings, because that was, for me, just, yeah, not good enough. But well done, the Bradford Bulls. Awesome, awesome performance great on the day. Win. Great yeah, win. great win. That's all from the Round 19 results. Now let's take a look at the Round 20 fixtures. First fixture, we've got Sheffield in sixth place v York in fourth place. This could be a really big fixture on Friday. <sighs> A really big fixture. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm going to back a Sheffield win this week. Uh, I just think Sheffield at home uh, against a York side who I think will, will go there and throw everything at them. I think it will just be. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just. I just think Sheffield are going to nick this one. I'll go the yeah. opposite to you. Then I love York. You're going to go York. Yeah. Next up, we've got Toronto v Halifax. Halifax have got to try and pull something back out the bag here. Yeah. Look, I think from a from a. A Halifax point of view, you know, Simon Griggs has just got to look at performance. I think he just needs an 80-minute performance. I think if he if he looks back at recent uh, games uh, that they've played in, you know, they've not been getting you know, beat by much, uh, but they just haven't been performing for long enough periods or consistently well for long enough periods. So I think his focus this week has to be you know, on some of the, the, the smaller detail. I think it'll be a tough ask to, to, to beat a, a Toronto side, as we've spoke about, just seem to be just getting better and better as this back end of the season comes. So I'm tipping a Toronto win. Uh, but in saying that, you know, like I said, Halifax just need to focus on delivering a good performance for me. Next up, we've got Toulouse v Bradford. Ooh, wow, interesting. Toulouse v Bradford, I'm going to tip a Toulouse win in the south of France. Uh, I just think, I just think the travel, the logistical battle will be too much for Bradford. But in saying that, they're playing good footy at the moment, Bradford. And there's a bit of a hunger there. There's a bit of a bit of steel about them. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was an upset in the south of France. However, I just think Toulouse have they've had their little bit of a blip. I yeah. think they had a few weeks where they just fell off the horse a little bit. They've got back on there with a decent performance at Barrow. They've got Jonathan Ford back in the team uh, as well. So I think you know that just gives them a different dynamic as well, which they've been missing for a few weeks. So I just think they'll have just a little bit too much for that, that Bradford side on the weekend. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a, a Bradford upset on, on the weekend. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tip to lose. I'm going to go Bradford. I'm going to stick with them this season. Cool. Next up, we've got Dewsbury in 12th, Barrow in 13th. This could be a, a great fixture here. Oh, wow. Like I said, some great fixtures this weekend in the championship, isn't there? There is. Well, I'm going to tip a Barrow win. I think I've seen enough encouraging signs for them in recent weeks that they'll go away from home and I think they'll nick the result at Dewsbury. But what a game that's going to be. What a game. Because Barrow could leapfrog Dewsbury here or Dewsbury go two points clear of Barrow. Plenty, plenty at stake. Sure is. Next up, we've got Featherstone in fifth, lean third, all oh, joint wow. in position. This will be a great game. <laughs> Another like great game. Mate, there's so, how many good games are there this week in the championship? Okay. This is unbelievable. A lot. Oh, wow. Like Featherstone at home to Lee. Oh, how do you call this one, really? I'm going to go Featherstone anyway. Oh, yeah. You, get, yeah, you like Featherstone, don't you? You've got a I soft do. spot for them, don't you? So, uh, a girl. Yeah, true, 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 true. I'm going to tip a Featherstone win at home as well, I think. Oh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tip it. Oh, I've got me my head saying yeah, feathers to my heart saying Lee. I, I really I'm really torn, but I'm, I'm going to go with I'm going to back with Fe I'm going to say Featherstone at home are going to get the spoils. Just I think it's going to be a classic game, great game, um, but I think Featherstone are just going to nick this one. But is, could, this could go either way. Wow, what a game! The next one's pretty close as well. We've got Swinton in tenth, Batley in ninth. This could be a close game as well. Again, very good uh, opportunity for either team to again get ahead of the other. They're both on equal points on twelve points. Uh, Swinton at home, I think Swinton at home are going to get it. I'm just going to say it there. I'm not going to think too much about it. There's so many close games this week. I really can't can't call most of them. You know what I mean? I think the reality is for most of the teams playing this week, just to probably sum it up, for most of these sides and these sort of games, because the importance of all the... the it, there seems to be an importance element to each of these games for different reasons. And it is going to come down to, you know, I think the, the way teams start, uh, I think if, if, if their forward packs can... Can, can lay a good platform. I think it's going to be 
the, the pivots, the nines and the sevens are going to really have to control the game from with their kicking game. The way they finish their sets and turning the ball over on their terms, uh, I think it's going to, going to prove real pivotal to, to the outcomes of games. Uh, so so the, those those teams that can, can take control early and, and maintain those teams and, and be consistent in doing the little things well for long periods are going to be the teams that come through and get the spoils this week. But wow, what a weekend for, for Championship Rugby League action. Fantastic matchups. Final game of the round 20 fixtures. We've got Witness in 11th, Rochdale in 14th. Where do you see this one going? Well, I see it at Witness, Witness win here at home. Yeah. And in some respects, it's probably the best... No disrespect to Rochdale, but it's probably the best fixture that Witness could have had, really. After off the back, defeat. Off the back of that heavy defeat. Like, if they were coming in now against Toronto or Toulouse, or, yeah, you'd be sort of fearing the worst. But I think this is a great opportunity. I should really say it's a great opportunity for Witness here. I think it will be a Witness win. But I think the key thing that the coach will be looking for this week is I want to see a hungry, determined performance. You, know, you won't just want to just kind of go through the motions and just do enough. I think you'll want to see a real professional, disciplined and ruthless performance this week from the Witness Vikings. And certainly that's what they should be aiming to deliver. Hopefully we shall see some then. Yep. That's all from the Betfred Championship wrap. Join us again next week for more Betfred Championship action.